Welcome back to my high yield video question bank series. If you're looking for a video to do challenging practice questions to help train your brain to get ready for USMLE and Comlex, please join me in today's question. A 35 year old man is brought to the emergency department after being found confused and drowsy at home. He has a history of drinking homemade alcohol, which he brews himself. He reports drinking a large quantity of this alcohol approximately eight hours before this presentation. On exam, he's disoriented, has a fruity odor to his breath, and his visual acuity is significantly reduced. His vital signs are stable. Lab studies reveal an elevated anion gap metabolic acidosis. His serum osmolality is increased and blood ethanol levels are normal. Management of this condition involves which of the following? A. Decreasing ethanol intake. B. Inhibition of alcohol dehydrogenase. C. Inhibition of aldehyde dehydrogenase. D. Administration of disulfiram, or E. Promotion of the formation of formic acid. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this. And now I'll give you the correct answer. The correct answer to this question is choice B. Inhibition of alcohol dehydrogenase. The question is describing a patient with methanol toxicity. And when you have a patient with methanol toxicity, the initial treatment of choice is fomepazole, Historically, IV ethanol administration was used, but in this question, the answer choice is going to be fomepazole. The mechanism of fomepazole is inhibition of alcohol dehydrogenase. So let's talk briefly about methanol toxicity. Methanol toxicity occurs when somebody consumes wood alcohol, i.e. homemade alcohol, windshield washer fluid, or paint thinner. In order to get this question correct and questions that are similar, to this question, you absolutely need to know this pathway that you see here. Methanol gets converted to formaldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase. Formaldehyde then gets converted to formic acid by aldehyde dehydrogenase. Likewise, ethanol gets converted to acid aldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase, and then the acid aldehyde gets converted to acetic acid also by aldehyde dehydrogenase. Understanding both sides of this pathway will help you understand why fomepazole is the correct answer. Fomepazole inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase, which is to say fomepazole inhibits the conversion of methanol to first formaldehyde and then to formic acid. Likewise, disulfiram inhibits aldehyde dehydrogenase, which means it inhibits the conversion of formaldehyde to formic acid. Now, in the case of methanol toxicity, what's causing the symptoms that patients present with is the excess formation of formic acid. Formic acid is very toxic to the optic nerve, so patients will present with visual changes, and all of these substances, especially formic acid, as you go down that methanol pathway, cause a variety of symptoms that cause CNS depression, nausea, vomiting, and altered mental status. Now, I showed you on the last slide that the treatment here is going to be fomepazole because we're inhibiting alcohol dehydrogenase Therefore, we're inhibiting the ability of methanol to ultimately become formic acid. However, one of the alternative treatments that was historically used was IV ethanol. And I just want to explain that briefly because sometimes this does show up on exams. Ethanol has a greater affinity for alcohol dehydrogenase than methanol does. So if somebody has methanol toxicity and you don't want that methanol to be converted to formaldehyde and then formic acid, you can distract the alcohol dehydrogenase by giving ethanol. When you administer ethanol, it, because it has a greater affinity for alcohol dehydrogenase than methanol, all of the alcohol dehydrogenase essentially will be used to convert the ethanol into acid aldehyde. So instead of methanol going down its pathway and becoming formic acid, the ethanol binds up all of the alcohol dehydrogenase and goes down its pathway to become acetic acid. So ethanol is an alternative treatment, and I just want to point that out because that is also very high yield. I already touched on the symptoms, but again, methanol toxicity presents as CNS depression, anion-gapped metabolic acidosis, optic nerve obstruction with visual changes, abdominal pain, altered mental status, and vomiting. So now if we go back to the question, how could you have eliminated the incorrect answer choices. So choice A says decreasing ethanol intake. And as I 
alluded to, if you were to theoretically decrease ethanol intake, that would actually worsen methanol toxicity because one of the treatment options include increasing ethanol intake. Again, to shunt the pathway away and have that greater affinity for alcohol dehydrogenase. Choice C, inhibition of aldehyde dehydrogenase, that is the mechanism of disulfiram, which is downstream and not the mechanism of the initial management of choice. Choice D, administration of disulfiram, is essentially saying the same thing as choice C. Again, the mechanism of disulfiram is to inhibit aldehyde dehydrogenase. So you can eliminate both C and D. And then choice E, promotion of the formation of formic acid, that's the opposite of what we want. Again, it is the formation of that formic acid which is responsible for most of the symptoms of methanol toxicity. So when you're looking at this test question and when you're approaching questions dealing with poisonings or overdoses or some type, some type of toxicity, identifying methanol requires you to know, again, the substance that was ingested, whether it's paint thinner or homemade alcohol or what have you, recognizing the symptoms, methanol really, really high yield to know about the anion gap metabolic acidosis and the visual changes to understand the pathway, the enzymes, alcohol dehydrogenase, aldehyde, aldehyde dehydrogenase, ethanol, methanol, etc. Best of luck.